Marxist party. So they abandoned the vision of Nelson Mandela of the rainbow nation, one nation and one future, which helped us enormously because there are many supporters of the ANC who don't want to be in a racist party. There are many supporters of the ANC who hate Julius Malema's rhetoric. And I think as much as the ANC tried to impress South Africa with the numbers they brought to the Siang Moba rally, so many people did they put off by the racist narrative that was put out at Siang Moba. Well, I think I just want to give him an opportunity. Yes. Uh, I think I must start off by uh, sending our condolences to uh, Anton Hammer's family. Uh, uh, sincerely, we are sending our condolences. Um, the, the, the ANC has consolidated its space, uh, leave the, the rhetoric by many commentators and analysts that a uh, top decline. Uh, we are uh, about 63 now in the actual uh, results. We're heading for 65, we're smelling the two in every three. And what is important about consolidating that base is the message that we're getting from that base is the message that says uh, the, you are delivering services, please improve, accelerate the pace. That's why you'll find out that in the many municipalities that attracted the opposition because they saw service delivery protests, we cleaned those municipalities. Because our people know that when they protest, it's not because they hate the ANC, they want to uh, this, this, us to step up the delivery. Many of them know that we have received services, we have houses, we have electricity, we have water. But please improve the quality of this and that. Accelerate the pace. You go to many informal centers, unsprayed, a deep slot. People know that you have delivered more than 7,000 houses in deep slot, but we need more of those. That's why people have stayed with the ANC. But more important to us is that the elections are not the end. They are just a, a point, local government election in the main, a mid-term checkpoint on what you should do better and do more. And our view is that we look into the messages that came through and consolidate our message as we move on. But uh, we're quite excited. We thank our volunteers and the voters for voting the ANC, have that content. Sometimes uh, I had uh, terms like neck to neck, uh, 60 and 20 being neck to neck. Uh, sometimes I, I get confused in South Africa. Actually, uh, people that uh, they miss this thing even in 2009 is that every time the, 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 the DA consolidates, it consolidates the opposition. It is the smaller parties who will disappear. The ANC is not about to disappear. Well, we have the DA leader here suggesting that you've actually helped them, that in part they owe their success to mm. you playing the race card. No, no, it's, uh, Helen is right. What, what Helen is doing, he is acknowledging the track record of the ANC and the fact that he has, she, they have no history as a party. Therefore, they can only dig on the ANC history and try to wear the clothes of, of the ANC to get some credibility. And therefore, in that way, we're 100 years old, we'll have a Mandela, we'll have a Lutuli, we'll have a Tambo, we'll have a Solomon Mashangu, and Helen Zile will have to go and pay tribute to those leaders of our movement but are you, to have cred credibility. Are you concerned, Helen Zile, saying that they've tripled their black support, they're already strategizing the campaign for 2014? It's a tripling, is if you are 1% and you have 3%, that's tripling. <laughs> uh, that that is from a low base. base. Uh, so when you come from a low base, doubling and tripling your base is quite, e is quite easy. But what is important for us is, in local government, that overall percentage is actually 65 or 70 or whatever, doesn't matter more, much, more than the number of municipalities that you control. The number of municipalities that we control are standing at 179. They are going to go past the 200 uh, mark. And to me, that's what, what is important. And when that map is rolled out, it becomes just green. At, if you look at a race for councils on our graphic, and that's also what we be on our viewer screens, the ANC with a 180 percentage there after 91.88 percent of the 234 councils have already been declared. That is the current position. DA at 17, IFP with five, and the NFP with two. Just Helen, for you to to see those numbers, mm. are, are you at any point concerned? Even though um, Gwedi Mantashe says, well, you know, if you look at 
one person and you triple that, then of course it's only 3%. But in the broader picture, are you concerned with the fact that you still have to catch up considerably? Well, the bottom line is this. First of all, Gwedi has got the statistics wrong, but we'll leave it there. 17 years ago, our value system got one voter out of every hundred. In this election, it got one voter out of every four. The DA is the only party that has grown at every election and the only party that has grown in this election. The only party that has grown in this election. And when we were speaking, Gwedi, about neck and neck, we were actually talking about Nelson Mandela Metro, where the ANC got 71% in the last election and the DA got 23% in the last election. Now we got 40%, that's an almost 20% increase, and you dropped by 20%. And in fact, you only made it by 1,5%. That is neck and neck in the ANC's heartland. And let me make another point about Nelson Mandela, if I may, Gwedi. Nelson Mandela is the father of our nation. He belongs to everybody, not just the ANC. Because he symbolizes a set of values. He symbolizes a commitment to non-racialism. He symbolizes a commitment to nation building. He symbolizes a commitment to uniting rather than dividing. He symbolizes a commitment to reconciliation and redress and service delivery. And he symbolizes the fight against corruption. All of those things are now the value system of the DA. We have filled that space. And in almost every one of them, the ANC has abandoned that space. Mr. Mandasha, does it bother you that the DA has in fact begun to basically uh, buy into the struggle narrative and, no, no. and, and that and, and perhaps uh, taking away something that was essentially a part of you without you even having to work for it no he doesn't he should, they don't take anything away from us they are rubbing themselves into our image and that doesn't worry me but aren't when, you worried about the effect of no that? i'm not worried about people rubbing themselves into our image because it means they give credibility to our own image uh, Nelson Mandela is an icon, he's a world icon, but the reality of the matter is that he came from the youth league of the ANC, he has been in the ANC since the 40s, he remains in the ANC, and anybody else who wants to use his image is fine as the leader of the nation, but the reality of the matter is that it is the ANC that produces a Mandela, and Mandela contributes in shaping the ANC. It is the ANC that produces an Oliver Tambo, and Oliver Tambo contributes in shaping the ANC. You can say that about Lutuli, you can say that about Mahabane, you can say that about any of those icons. Anybody in South Africa can claim those because the ANC symbolizes the struggle against a racial oppression and class exploitation. But but very quickly, can what I she has done... Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? And now, and there's this point of the ANC dropped in Nelson Mandela. What Helen is, 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 is forgetting is that after the split of Coke in 2009, we dropped below 50. That's why she was convinced that she would take Nelson Mandela. The fact that we've built above 50, it means we're rebuilding ourselves in Nelson Mandela. So we'll when we return, point. we'll continue this discussion with the Secretary General of the ANC, Gwede Mantashe, and the leader of the DA, Helen Zeller, about their response to the results thus far. Stay with us here at the SABC for a very special broadcast, a 12 o'clock broadcast from the IEC in Pretoria. at home to win right here on the right to win there are five high-end mobile phones to be won at the end of this series if you answer an easy question each week this week's question is how many days after voting must the IEC declare the election results send your name followed by TRTW and your answer to double three seven two one Welcome back. You're watching a special broadcast coming to you live 
from the National Results Centre here in Pretoria. My name is William Paul. And I'm Lynette Francis. And just before the break, we were talking about the response the various parties had to their success thus far. We'll also be looking at some graphs reflecting what has been happening nationally. We have uh, Gwede Mantashi, Secretary General of the ANC here, and Helen Ziller, also leader of the DA, giving her responses to their performance thus far. Let's just recap on the national picture as it stands at the moment. The ANC uh, with 61.9%, the DA with 24.1%, the IFP with 3.6%, and the NFP 2.4%. Uh, Remind you also that it's a race for votes, and about 95.9% of the voting districts counted thus far, and that's the reflection of the percentages. Moving on, COPE there, we're looking at the top 5 to 6 COPE in a fifth position with 2.2%, and the IDP with about 1.1% in sixth place. Well, Mr. Mandashe, the point I was uh, trying to uh, get an answer for you on was, yes, you're correct, rubbing themselves um, and by so doing, acknowledging the fact that um, um, Nelson Mandela, uh, Albert Lutuli, these are uh, national icons and these are not people who strictly belong um, to the African National Congress. But what the DA leader, um, um, but what I'm getting from the DA leader is that by doing that, the Democratic Alliance has actually gained more black votes. Isn't that cause for concern? For the ANC. No, no, there's no cause for concern. If people go to the DA because they believe that uh, they follow the Freedom Charter, one of the most important things is that they will be believing in the Freedom Charter. But to, 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 to steal somebody's gowns without acknowledging, in academic terms, is called plagiarism. <laughs> now, the problem with the DA is that they never acknowledge that Mandela comes from the ANC and they want to see him as an icon who comes from the blue and not uh, uh, acknowledge that he was saved by the struggle and he led this country to where it is and appreciate the fact that it is the ANC that shaped him and he contributed in shaping the ANC and when he does not acknowledge that and he want to just uh, appropriate the character that is plagiarism Are you plagiarizing? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. We have many icons and heroes Helen Sussman was a wonderful strong fighter against apartheid mm. She was one of the pioneers of our movement, in fact, the pioneer of our movement. And when you look at what happened, we weren't only taking black voters. The wonderful thing was we were taking all voters with this message because most South Africans will want a party for all the people. They know that we will only make a success of our country if we work to unite rather than divide. So with our message of doing that, of attracting many more black voters, we in fact took the entire Freedom Front Plus's base away. So we actually challenged the far right wing of the white nationalists and the black nationalists, the racial nationalists in the ANC, and we won from both of them. So we really owe a debt of thanks to Julius Malema for taking the ANC away from its values, for positioning it in a place of racial nationalism, of race division, which many, many people in the ANC don't want. And that is why they're coming to us. I'm, I'm interested to know if you think that the ANC's message has been muddled. Helen Ziller says that they were quite clear, they were very specific, and that it appealed to everybody na nationally. Do you believe that there have been some probably mixed messages in the approach of, of what the ANC wanted to get across to its voter base? Because Advocate Robert Lachlory said that he's concerned they weren't enough, enough a buy-in from a lot of prominent leaders within the ANC to go on campaign trails, that people were unsure there was a shortage of um, resources, for example. I, I don't know if that is factually correct in terms of resources are never enough. Helen will tell you they have a lot of money, but it's not enough. Hi, no, no. We haven't got enough. Chancellor House, yeah, have a lot of money. We haven't it's got not Chancellor enough. House, Wendy. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that the leadership of the NC, the, 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 the fact that we have sustained the levels we're in is because we had a number of leaders were all over. You'll find the NC in every province at any given moment. But let me give you the point of plagiarism that I'm talking about. Nice talk from Helen Zill. He's, she's sitting in, in the Western Cape with a cabinet of males only. 
We have not seen those males in the, in the campaign of the DA. And when you begin to see that, you see that what you say is not interpreted in what you do. People will, will, will believe you for a short time and they will see through the message that the message doesn't reflect the practice. And that's why all the time you wouldn't see that cabinet in the campaign, all, all, they, were, they were absent. But you, you, they are all running the, the, the province. And that is the point that we're making, that plagiarism uh, of trying to appropriate Mandela's uh, personality is not going to change the day because Mandela is not blue. He is black, green and gold. He is a, he is a leader of the ANC. He is in the list of the, of the 12 presidents of the ANC who are on president number 39. But surely you must, when you do look at your performance thus far, although you say we didn't perform so badly, there are I'm not saying we didn't that... perform so badly. We have performed good. But if you, are, are, if you in, look at it on paper... We are at 62. We are at 62 percent. And if you see any performance above 60 percent as dismal, then you are in a world of your own. Let me give you another example. If you go, go global, look at any party that has uh, overseen the recent recession, all of them, everywhere in the world, are out of power. The ANC is not reflected to be, to be going out of power soon, despite oversteering a, a, a global recession that impacted on us. We lost 1.7 million jobs over a period. And uh, the fact that we are still appealing to over 60% of the electorate means that people understand that we are genuine, we have a track record, we have a history. But when you do stock taking, Mr. Mantashe, surely one looks at one's gains and at one's losses. And if you had to focus, as any business person would, on our losses and the gains, what are your concerns about the losses? Where do you think has the, the policy or the campaign, for that matter, gone wrong? Why don't you want me to start with the gains? No, because you did no. earlier on. Well, I want you to elaborate to on it as well. Because Check the picture in case that end. Go north of Tukela, of Tukela. You will see that the NC all of a sudden has a big presence there, big footprint. It has taken a number of municipalities uh, over. And people don't look that way because it is the ANC that makes ro inroads there. They will only focus on where the ANC seem to be shaky. And that is the first point. And when you look in into the losses, one of the things that we have acknowledged openly is that there is something we are not doing very well in the minority community, but we are colored and, and, and Indian communities. That we are going to revisit because we must talk to their issues, we must look into the, 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 the service delivery packages and see if they fit their needs. For example, the pressure that is put on the ANC by informal settlements make us sometimes to be a little bit weak in dealing with uh, back room dwellers, uh, backyard dwellers. And I think it's an issue that we're going to be looking into because we've seen it as showing red lights in our, in our direction. Mm. Well, let's talk to uh, the day. You heard uh, what, what, what Mr. Mantasha was, was saying about, about uh, what you are doing being different from what you preach. If you look at the campaign, I mean, you had Lindy Wamazibuko, you had uh, Patricia Delero, the three of you were mm -hmm. together for most of the time, mm -hmm. and you were essentially the faces of the DA's campaign. Mm -hmm. But when people look at, for example, the composition of the, of the, provincial, of the provincial cabinet, when people look at the back room uh, of, of this campaign, they tend to see white males. Well, certainly not in the cabinet, they don't. I mean, the top positions in the Western Cape government are males, but they're certainly not black males. The speaker... Not white the, males. Oh, yeah, they, they're certainly not white males, thanks very much. They're 50-50. The speaker, the deputy speaker, and half of the top positions are people of colour and black. I mean, I hate using these categories because it is totally against the value set that we have. Completely against the value set we have. We look at people for their value, the value that they add. And you saw three women in this election campaign. You saw Lindy where you saw Patricia and you saw myself. Because we were there for a reason. I'm the leader of the Democratic Alliance. Patricia is the leader of the Independent Democrats. We're now working together and we're merging our parties. 
And so obviously we both had to be there. And then the national spokesperson, not only for the DA, but for this election campaign, was and is Dindiwe Maziboko. So it made sense to have three women on there, all earned their positions because of the value they were adding, not because we went and measured chromosomes. And I'd like to ask Wedi a question. He says that the ANC is on to their 13th president. Have you, ever had, you are so low. have you ever had a woman president in your hundred year no. history, Wedi? No. no. So you can't come here and talk about gender. We have more prominent women in the DA than you have in the ANC. And we don't deploy people in the DA. And you must always remember that. We don't say, well, now we've got five of this and so we need four of that and now we need seven of that. Yes, we believe in diversity. But if the women in our party in the Western Cape wanted to rather stand for the national List, and most of them did, we don't deploy them elsewhere. We had three women who got elected on our provincial list, and when I made a choice about cabinet members, we chose the men who I thought were better for those particular fits, for their particular experience, history, competence, and all of those sorts of things. They certainly were not all white men. That is a complete myth, and that myth must go away because it's been invented by the ANC to try and put us in some in kind of... Yes, I want to to in. What I want to chip in is that uh, we never had a president who is a female. No, you didn't, uh, Again, know. again... Will, uh, Helen will make that two points because it doesn't know the history of the ANC. That at the beginning, where it started, what ca what was the character of the ANC? <coughs> How did it change in the 20s? How did it change in the 40s? How did it change in the 80s? Now, which began to open up for women. But today, the only party that focuses on the racial, gender, and class contradictions in society is the ANC. Practically, it's, we're not doing it theoretically and say uh, it's competence. It's not competence. We need intervention because gender contradictions are real. Patriarchal power relations in society are real, are not a dream. And if Helen is going to run away and say, no, these women are not competent enough, men are now competent, she is going to be making a mistake. She must intervene in that space because gender relations in society are real. Of course they are. No one yes. knows that more than a woman, Gwenny. Yes. And yes. you don't have to tell That's me. That's why I'm worried women. about you I... pretending to be a man. And don't appreciate <laughs> the fact that gender power relations uh, are real in society. Ready. That what is the hell out of me. Well, I'll ask you the same question we asked him. I you've love... spoken about your successes, how well you've yeah. done, how you've uh, <laughs> mobilized more blood support this time <laughs> around than you've ever done before. Yeah. But what have been your most serious challenges? Well, serious challenges in this campaign was growing. You know, we, we had reached a ceiling of minorities in the last election. We could only grow if we got considerable black support, and that's what we have got. So we're delighted about that. But let me answer Gwedi's question. Gwedi, we take race, class, and gender contradictions very seriously indeed. But our policy and philosophy deals with them much better than the ANC's does. For example, you'll get Jimmy Manyi saying, no, there's an over-concentration of colored people in the Western Cape, so we have to rearrange them across South Africa. Now, we don't believe in that kind of social engineering. We believe in opening opportunities of growing the economy so there's more opportunities for everybody. And we believe in massive affirmative education so that we can have redress. You know, Gwedi, you might be interested, you, know, you might not know the statistic. When we took over in Cape Town from the ANC, 40% of contracts in the Western, in the Cape Town government, 40% of contracts in Cape Town went to HDIs and SMMEs. Under the DA, that rose to at least 60%, and in the last quarter of 2009, it was 80%. In the Western Cape government, I think approximately 80% of our contracts of 1.3 billion in the last year were awarded to HDIs. And this was on the basis of opening the scope, not using political manipulation and cronyism and political contacts to narrow the giving of granting of tenders and contracts to specific people. In fact, we banned members of the government or officials from doing business with the state, so we got rid of corruption. And we do empowerment much better than the ANC.
I'll explain to you why and I'll show you empirically through the figures. You can't come here and just make blanket assertions, Wendy. I will show you empirically through the figures that we do genuine empowerment much, much better than the ANC. We're not a crony party. We don't manipulate things to enrich ourselves or enrich our friends. We do things to make sure that we spread empowerment benefits to all. And I'll give you chapter and verse and the figures. Let me make a point. You see, what was missed in the Jimmy Manu where the DA was manipulated by Afri Forum into a clip instead of the message is that they avoided the debate and the essence of the message that, listen, you can say anything. In 2011, 72% of managerial positions are in, white, in the hands of white males. That disappeared in the debate, that it cannot continue as if nothing has happened, that you remain uh, having the economy dominated as if there is no change, and managerial position not changing anywhere and everywhere, including the Western Cape. Now, and then and, and the point that again was missed there was that even if you can have 30% of a managerial position being given to colored people in, in the Western Cape, it will still translate into 4.9% nationally, which is under-representation. That message disappeared in that debate. The second thing that uh, Helen is, is not uh, genuine about is that in the Western Cape, PEE, which is doing very genuinely, is okay. If you are not identified with the with the with the DA, you get decimated. We if you want to know, company. if you want to know, you can talk to companies, establish them like Oasis, where even their property is marginalized because it must tow a particular line. You can take companies in the Western Cape, establish back companies in the Western Cape, which says we don't know whether we should migrate or not, because the the, the, the DA nice talking but very brutal in dealing with people who are not loyal to them. This is a discussion between the Secretary General of the ANC, Gwede Mantasha, and uh, also oh, Helen Zinner, the really. leader of the Democratic Alliance, talking about their losses and their gains, doing some stock taking, some reflecting as if you only joined this discussion now, we'll be looking throughout the hour and a half at where they have gained, where they have lost, uh, made losses, and where they foresee their future going, particularly the campaign for 2014. I just wanted you, Ms. Zilla, to, to reflect, because we did ask it, and I did ask Mr. Mantashi as well, what could you have done better, particularly if you look at the losses? Where could you have improved, and particularly steer your campaign towards 2014? Because you did touch on the fact that you wanted to grow. But I mean, if we measure your visits to Port Elizabeth, for example, you were very anxious to have a stronger presence in that province. I will answer your question right now, Lynette, as long as I can answer Gwedi's allegation uh, first we of all. We unfortunately have to move on. We, we want to move, to move on. Move on. Okay. You. Now, Gwedi alleges that if you aren't a DA supporter, you're worked out of government. That is absolute nonsense. We have just appointed in a very high position in my department as a Deputy Director General, a person who put down on his application form that he was ANC. I would have never have raised it in the, in the interview, but he put it down on his CV. So I said to him, look, you've put it down on your CV. You've got a very good CV, very good experience. You've got very good qualifications, but we want an independent civil service. So I need to know from you, will you be absolutely committed to total independence and serving all the people? You'll be deep in my office, you'll have everything about what's going on in my department, but you have to be non-aligned when you're serving the people. He said he believed in that. I said, well, then you obviously don't really believe in the ANC's policies because cadre deployment means that you put the interests of the ANC above the organization and above the people. But nevertheless, if you said, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, and we appointed him. He's doing a brilliant job. In Cape Town, when I was the mayor, we had advertised... And cadres of the ANC doing a brilliant job. Fast, brilliant. Okay. But, then, but you see, they're not cadres of the ANC. Helen, I need you to please get back to my service. question because I'm we need to move that on. I'm answering that because you mustn't please. spread lies and nonsense on the ANC. Mr. Kudem, please allow us to finish that. Okay. Um, Helen, you were saying about what you could do differently, particularly where there have been losses, that you possibly envisage the party doing much better. You know, this was the best campaign we've ever run, Lynette. We exceeded all of our targets. We kept to our business plan, we had a budget, we raised the money for that budget, we spent every cent properly, we wasted nothing. I am very pleased with that. We would have loved to have won Nelson Mandela. In the last election, we got 23%. 
in Nelson Mandela. We pushed that up to 40%. That is extraordinary. The ANC got 71%. They dropped to 51% since the last local government election. If COPE had just held a small percentage of their vote, we would have done it. So I suppose my great sadness is that um, perhaps COPE could have come into the campaign much earlier and worked a lot harder. But this is very interesting because I mean, prior to this election, in the run-up to, um, to the election, COPE was never part of your equation. It At least you never spoke about it. Of course we didn't speak about it. Yes, but now that you haven't done what you said you were going to do, you're blaming it on COPE. I'm not at all. I mean, just look at the figures. You're a political analyst for you, so I'm sure you know the results of... Uh, well, you're an analyst. You're an analyst. You've been anchoring all of these debates, so you're an analyst. So I'm sure you would have seen all of the results from all of the prior elections. After the formation of COPE, Wedi's right. We pushed them below 50%. They got 49%, I think it was, on the provincial ballot, and 51% on the national ballot. And we did that because the DA got something in the national election like 26%, and COPE got another big percentage that pushed the ANC down below 50. So it was never realistic that we were going to win Nelson Mandela without a coalition. We always spoke about winning Nelson Mandela on a coalition. Always. What amazed me was that we pulled up from 23% in the last local government election to 40%. That is unheard of growth. So we never spoke about an outright win in Nelson Mandela. We didn't even speak about an outright win in Cape Town. Well, we were hoping we'd get an outright win in Cape Town. We didn't know we would do so spectacularly well. We were hoping for an outright win. But an outright win in Nelson Mandela was never, ever on the cards. It was always in a coalition. But to someone who was listening to you, you certainly created an impression that it was possible to defeat the ANC in the Nelson Mandela. In other words, if there was one other metro, if there was one other metro where the DA had what it took, together of course with COPE, uh, to defeat the ANC, it was the Nelson Mandela metro. And that hasn't happened. Well, we came damn close. We brought the ANC down from 71% in the last local government election to 51%. And 51% are not a safe margin. 51% is definitely not. That is neck and neck wheel. We did fabulously well there. And maybe if there was anything we could have done to take that 1.5% extra, I probably would have lived in Port Elizabeth for the whole election. Seeing that we're talking about provinces and your performance there, let's just quickly move on, Mr. Kwantasha, to, to the KZN, for example, and the inroads that you have made as a party there. Quickly uh, talk to us about that. What is nice about KZN there is that uh, we have a team there that is very systematic. Uh, consolidate and move on, consolidate and move on. Uh, and, and I think the growth there is not a fluke, it's real. And they can quantify it beforehand. And uh, that is how, what we want to replicate it in all the provinces, if we would. Um, and, 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 and when you work that way, you can quantify your work. Actually, we came to this election saying our biggest target is north of Tugela. You will, you will have listened to me all the time. I talk of north of Tugela because that is the area where we are actually absent and wanted to, to penetrate that area. We have done that ex extremely well. But, but, but the, the, the reality of the matter is when we do the analysis of all the results, we were going to look into where we have declined, where we have not gone well, where, uh, how have we done in the Western Cape. For example, I, I, I looked into the numbers and, and looked into DAID in 2006. Mm. They were at 53. Uh, we were at 38. We dropped in 2009. Not now. They grew to 57 and we dropped to 31. You get my point? If you look into the province, they were at 50 in 2006, we were at 39. And we, we dropped in 2009, they were at 56, we were at 31.9. And if you look in the statistics now, in the Western Cape and in the city of Cape Town, we have not declined further than we did in 2009. And to us it means, when we said after 2009, let's start rebuilding, that is beginning to pay some dividends to us. The same applies to Nelson Mandela, by the way. That in Nelson Mandela, we took the fact that we dropped below 14, 50. Very, very serious. The fact that we are above 50, despite a number of flashpoints in terms of our own problems in that, in, in that metro, is actually a reflection of the hard work we put into it. So, it's not 2006, then 2011. 
We look into the drop that we saw in 2009. Very, very serious. Take Johannesburg. Johannesburg, is, that is not translated into percentages. The, the growth in terms of voters for the ANC is dramatic. But it is not translated because there was high turnout in the metro there. And, and, and we are going to do that in lessons in details after the elections. Well, let's, 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 let's continue with that discussion about your strategy around the, I mean, uh, KZN, north of uh, the Tugela. You said, what was your strategy?